Hey everyone. So I tried to make this video earlier, but then I got distracted by a dog playing frisbee in the park outside of my window. I had my second ice cream sandwich of the day and a lot of things just happened. So I'm just gonna sit down and talk to you guys. Last time I talked to you about how to find a therapist, but then I got to thinking, how do you even decide if or when you even need therapy? So that's just kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today. My very first experiences with therapy was when I was really young, about nine years old. Of course, this wasn't my decision and I honestly didn't even know what I was doing there. I just knew that I had to sit in this room with this lady while she made me draw pictures and talk about my dad. The first time I chose to go to therapy myself was in high school. I was having a lot of trouble in school and with the relationships in my life, so I decided that I needed to seek help. During this bout of therapy, I worked on a lot of trauma that I had been repressing for years and honestly, it really sucked. I felt every emotion possible when I was inside of that room with her. I cried, I laughed, I screamed. I really went through a lot during this time. But every single time I left a session, I felt just a little more weight lifted off my shoulders. And this was actually the therapist that first suggested that I try an antidepressant and I honestly do believe that that saved my life. Now let's fast forward quite a bit to my last few years in college. I was having two or three panic attacks a day with constant general anxiety. I tried meditation, yoga, exercise, reading motivational quotes, all the usual shit that you hear about. And I just felt like everything I was trying was failing. So this is when I realized that I needed the help of a professional. In the first session with this new therapist, after talking about my current habits and what works and doesn't work for me that I know of, she told me to drink more water stop drinking so much caffeine, and to stop taking so many naps during the day because it's disrupting my sleep cycle. Wow, what a revelation. No, but seriously, this lady really did help me learn how to cope with the anxiety and panic that school was causing me. She even wrote a letter for me to get certain accommodations at school, like taking tests outside of my classroom where I felt more comfortable, and being able to sit near an exit in all of my classes. I unfortunately stopped seeing this therapist because she stopped taking my insurance, but I was still able to use everything she taught me and given me to push through, and it was incredibly beneficial because I finally actually graduated with a bachelor's degree. Hallelujah. So I've been out of school for about three months now and I can already tell a huge difference in my mental health. My boyfriend, my friends, my family have all commented on how well I'm doing since graduation. Instead of having multiple panic attacks a day, I've probably had about five total since graduation. I do still have general anxiety most days, uh, some being a lot worse than others. So recently, I have actually decided to go back to therapy. My life is actually really great at the moment, and other than worrying about how I'm gonna pay for my student loans, I really don't have that much to complain about. So why do I wanna go back to therapy? There's a super common misconception that you have to be at rock bottom to seek professional help. But the reality is you can be in bikini bottom, all happy and sunny and still want or need to see a therapist. Think of going to therapy like going to the gym. Most people go to the gym when they wanna improve the way they look or improve their physical health. But once they've achieved that desired look or level of health, they don't just stop going to the gym. You have to continue going and be consistent if you want to maintain that look and level of health. The same thing happens in therapy. You start seeing a therapist because you want to improve your mental health, but you shouldn't stop going just because you feel better. You need to keep going to maintain that new level of mental health. Therapy should be seen as a process. It's not a magical cure and your therapist won't fix all of your problems. They're there to help you unravel the tangled mess inside of your brain and figure out the best ways to change or cope with those things. Therapy is not easy. It's definitely hard work. But I can tell you this. I have never heard anyone say, You know, I really regret going to therapy regularly and doing everything my therapist has told me to do to work on myself. It doesn't happen. Just like eating well, going to the doctor, and exercise are good for your body, going to therapy is a way for you to get your mind healthy and maintain that healthy mindset. If you liked this little ramble of mine, please give it a thumbs up. 
and if you've had a therapy success story, I would absolutely love to hear about it in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Please come in the mouth, please like the video. Thank you.